you very you, much to care. Let me tell y'all something about my vodka, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, um, this 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 liquid right here, this is my taste buds in this bottle. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, before the liquid went in here, I had to make sure that it could stand up, you know, stand up to all the vodkas on the shelves, you know what I'm saying? So you taste up, tested them all. Yeah, I put it up against the olives, I put it up against Smirnoffs, I put it up against Grey Goose, mm -hmm. all of that, Nothing. you know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something, my vodka is smoother than all of the mother vodkas. <laughs> <laughs> it's smooth, it's real smooth, it goes down real smooth, but the trick is, it sneaks up on you and it gives you a a long bus. <laughs> you know, it sneaks up on you and it, and it hurts. And I ain't gonna lie, but that's my promise. It's my promise, you know what I'm saying? What's the, what's, got, what's the best night you've had drinking this? So, huh? you, you have a story? What's the best night drinking that you've had? Tonight. You end up tonight? <laughs> 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 I love it, man. Yeah, pour me up one. Yeah, I got you, G. Best, best night. All right, man. This is the toast to the most, because we eat pot roast, all the suck them. Just can't play us too close. Oh, smoother every shot. I love it. Clock around my neck, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this, big... Besides that one. This, this well, clock, that's because you're all white outfit, you know? This, this clock right here I got from Kelly Ripper. Mm. Yeah, I got that from Kelly Ripper when I went on the Regis and Kelly show yeah. and everything. And they used to wear these clocks to do these cooking segments <laughs> and everything. You know what I'm saying? So when I was leaving, <laughs> Kelly said, hey, Flav, here, I want you to have my clock. Really? So she gave yeah, me. She gave do you have other? Who else is giving you a clock? Any other celebrities? Or huh? Any big names give you clocks besides her? Uh, Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams oh. gave me a clock. With her picture on it, I wear it. <laughs> I wear, I wear the Wendy Williams clock and everything. But also, you know, my favorite clock is this cuckoo clock that I, that was made for me over in Switzerland. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And um, just to say, right? If it strikes three o'clock, I got this little flame that comes out and says, "Yeah, boy." <laughs> So you just wait for it, huh? Hey, yo, I ain't gonna lie, but these two shots that I just took right, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, flame, baby. The flame. I'm doing it. Hey, straight up. Just one time. Just everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Anything you want. One time for me. I just want to hear everybody say, flavor, flame. Flame. <laughs> flame. I appreciate it. It's really nice having you. Give it up for Flavor Flav, man. You see what you see with three shots do to you. One. High five. Woo! Okay, let's do this. All right. Thank you guys for coming out to episode 21. We are here with an amazing, amazing cast. We have Mario, and when we start talking with him, you guys are gonna have your mind blown because he can find t-shirts and beer from all over the world and talk about it. We have Adam, he's here to talk about his new startup. Taylor is actually here because you won Startup Weekend. So I wanna get the, uh, yeah, congratulations on that. Shot of vodka for you? Celebration? I one. I'm good. Oh, okay. Just one more <laughs> It's tempting, though. All right. Well, let's talk, let's talk about your startup because uh, it sounds like you guys have made quite the impact. So what is Unite Me? All right. So uh, Unite Me, basically what we want to do is make it fun and easy for people to give back to the community and support local nonprofits. Uh, so with Unite Me, businesses can put together fundraising campaigns and people can buy online. Uh, they can support a, uh, choose a cause to support and then they can get a voucher and redeem it at a local business for face value. Okay. So it's an easy way to kind of give while you live. So my, this is what I got for you. This is one of the one of the prizes. You got a bottle of champagne here. We're gonna celebrate now. You now, Taylor. It's not just you. You've got a team. Tell us about uh, the other people that helped made Unite Me come together, and um, where you guys are planning on taking it in the future. Yeah. Well, I was actually uh, really fortunate. I was in I'm a uh, over to a lean startups class this semester at UNLV. So uh, I got to pitch that idea in front of the class, and uh, oh, nice. a couple of my buddies uh, were nice enough to join me uh, <laughs> when no one else wanted to at the time. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, <laughs> uh, my friend Kevin Goble and Jesse Ty, uh, 
were uh, nice enough to join me, and Kevin is uh, an awesome developer, and Jesse oh. actually owns his own restaurant. Top. It's about to go by. So, uh, you want to play that top? I got to hold okay. it down. Let's gonna... do it. <laughs> 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 That's good. Congratulations! Yeah. That's like a bathroom yeah. break, right? <laughs> All right, okay, we'll leave people with a call to action. We're gonna start drinking this, but where, uh, like, so what, what's the URL and uh, what, do you, what can people do to keep helping you in the future? Oh uh, yeah, so I mean, the community that- Don't this... worry about this, I got this. Okay, it's good. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about that. I'm housekeeping too. No, so you're the just, winner, like yeah. we- We can clean after you. That's what we're yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, the, the, uh, the site is unitedly.org, okay. and uh, people go online and register. We have a, an active fundraiser on there right now that people can check out. Can I? <laughs> well, there are actually were a ton of good ideas that weekend. Uh, there's a ton of talent in that room. Actually, they didn't take second or third place, but one of the teams that stood out was Unprint. They came up with this idea to digitize receipts, and they came up with it on like Monday and then did it over the weekend, together. so, and they even had hardware to do it, so, I mean, it was pretty insane. All right, well, there's nothing to say except congratulations. Oh, we need one more. It's all right. It's just, there you go. A little fuzzy, but we're not very well organized here. We know what we're doing. No, you're all four. All right. There's so, just one last thing to say, and that is, is congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. We've got your Thank audience you. Keep it coming, because we still got to talk about the, uh, we still got to talk to Mario. And you know all about beer and t-shirts. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, Project 3 Blind Mice. All right, 3 Blind Mice was started by myself and two other entrepreneurs here in Las Vegas. And we were looking for something unique that you get a shirt every month at your favorite pub all over the country. Mm -hmm. And we thought, why not? give that opportunity for other people to have the same experience we have at that unique place. And this month, May, we, we started with NOLA Brewing out okay. of New Orleans. And we were there a couple years ago and it was amazing. Oh, yeah. And uh, so this that's our pick of the month. And we thought we would uh, showcase it and explain, we give a postcard explaining everything about it and where it's uh, shipped to and it's just amazing, great beer. And, and you brought a couple models to show up the t-shirts too, I right? Yeah, absolutely. I think Mike, if we could get a, get, all right, this is their moment to shine. <laughs> 15 minutes of fame. This is the one if you want. Oh, no. I'll take two. You got it. Take four, I'll take four. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you can get her to come up. I don't know if you guys want to come up here, you can say hi to the audience. A little shy right now? Okay. Sorry. I wouldn't want to be around this table either. I don't blame you. That's all right. We'll, we'll ease them into it. But um, so, okay, so you have a contest going on too, right? So people, tell, tell so, me a little bit about that. So well, actually, it's not really a contest. So right now, if you tweet, first three people that tweet, three blind, no, number three, three Just blind mice, right, yeah, right, three blind mice shirt. We'll, we'll give you a first month free. So just tweet that and we'll give you a free, okay, free so, shirt. So Is hashtag, it, and they don't need to be following you or anything? Just hashtag? Nope. Hashtag three blind my shirt. Okay, and hashtag, hashtag three that. Blind that and take a photo of you and win the contest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guarantee it? No, you can't be biased towards Adam. <laughs> you just, don't make don't it, judge how many they have. <laughs> All right. Or, or, you can, or you can visit us at threeblindmyshirtclub.com. Right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So we got, we'll put the URL here at the bottom of the screen. But yeah, the number three and then blindmyshirtclub.com. Absolutely. All right. Um, and then the last thing we want to talk about is uh, another podcast. Makes it to downtown. Woo! Yeah. Oh, some, of, some of our biggest supporters, too. Pavel and Susan are doing the Sin Shop. Yep, which they made this at the Sin Shop. So if you guys don't know, the Sin Shop is right down or right up the road over there. And it's a maker space. You guys can play with uh, three. 3D printers, you can play with all sorts of cool, cool gear. And those guys actually made this as a gift for us. And they're now hosting their own podcast, too. So um, they this, this is symbolic of Vegas tech right here. We are supporting and promoting other podcasts here. Oh, yeah. That's what they... Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We'd be, we'd be nothing without them. I need a reason. Dylan, this is an intervention. I've been meaning to talk with you. No, it's, uh, it's very cool, up. though, to be able to support them. They do a lot of great things in the community. Well. Oh, now you do. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to check out the Sin Shop. Podcast uh, and uh, support me too. Them, and we'll so. put the we'll put the URL right there at the bottom. So right here, right there, right there, magically at the bottom. So right. all right, well, that's it. Well, Mario, right, Taylor, thank you. thank you guys very much. Congratulations! Yeah, congratulations, yeah. congratulations on the win. <laughs> Thanks for an excuse for champagne. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please go for it. We'll put the champagne over there on the bar too. So anybody wants. To Far in 
Kevin from Venture Beat. So thank you for coming to visit. You're here for Tech Cocktail Week, right? Yep. Okay, well, let me give you a quick background so everybody knows who Christina is. She is a tech journalist at Venture Beat. She is a Londoner that is living in San Francisco, and she's the co-founders of Ladies Who Vino. So this is a networking event for women in tech. And she covers health IT, education, and enterprise tech. In the past, she's contributed to the San Francisco Chronicle, the Next Web, the Washington Post. And she's been a featured expert on online video segments from ABC News, NBC, Cron4, and the Huffington Post Live. And give her a big round of applause for coming out to the podcast. All right, so a lot of pressure on you, but you've been exploring the city. What do you think about the downtown project so far? Well, um, honestly, I was a little skeptical before I came here because it's a very ambitious project. Um, but being here, um, meeting people from the community and just seeing how supportive they are, it's you know, just completely blown my expectations out of the water. So, um, and I'm a journalist, I'm supposed to be skeptical. <laughs> I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed by what's going on here. Um, and the quality of the startups is on parallel to a lot of what I see in the Bay Area. So I'm glad to see another emerging um, tech hub. Okay, so how much have you explored? I mean, have you been to the coffee shop and talked with people, or have you also been like going on the tours for Zappos and seeing the container park progress and all yeah, of that stuff? Yeah, so we went to Zappos today, which is like the craziest office in the world. Um, and then, of course... <laughs> so that was your first time? That was my first time, yeah. They did the shake weight thing? Oh, they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone gets anything done. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, it's the collisions. Like every five minutes, people are just like yelling and screaming. And, um, <laughs> But um, no, so the Zappo, we saw Zappos today, went to the Beat Coffee Shop. I've been looking at a lot of the co-working spaces. Um, there's, it seems to be there's two or three now and just um, a lot of the urban planning. Uh, and also like kind of impressed with what you guys are all doing with um, new healthcare and, and schools. Yeah. And that's probably the most interesting bit, I think. Okay, because $50 million is just for education, and then, um, yeah, the rest is for, I think there's $50 million for education, $50 million for small businesses, $50 million tech, and then 200 for land yep. value. But, but you can buy a lot more land than San Francisco around here, oh you know, God. so that makes a big difference. I was, I'm astonished by how cheap things are. <laughs> like, it's just, I was told that it's like 2100 for a unit, <laughs> and I was so confused. I was, we were just talking before, and I was like, are you sure you don't mean 2100 per person? He's like, no, for the whole unit. Nope, that's um, legit. That's that's life out here. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about cultures that uh, you've experienced in the past and what you think that uh, startups should know about culture. Um, yeah. So I, when I was uh, just starting out at VentureBeat, I, I did this series called the Startup Culture Series, and I would go to a different office once a week and spend the day at a different startup and kind of um, you know see what they're doing different to any kind of corporate culture. And I think mm -hmm. startups have this really unique opportunity just to decide what, what do they want their culture to be. And a lot of them, you know, begin by writing these sort of handbooks, these long handbooks of this is this is you know what defines us as a company. And probably no one reads them. Um, but it's little it's little you know touches. Like you'll go to one health startup and they don't have any soda or chocolate bars, but everything's organic and it's just tofu and lettuce for lunch. And that's just their cute thing that they love to do. Um, and then others, um, it's a you know they don't believe in cubicles, so everyone it's a very open culture. There's literally no walls. Um, and I think that's great because it just means there's a lot of collaboration, open communication. Others will say, take as many vacation days as you want because we want you to be rested up. And people don't seem to take advantage of that because they take pride in their work. Right. So it's been really great to see how um, you know, new companies forming are, are saying, we're going to do things different. And then, and what would you recommend for a startup? What do you think they can do to build that culture? I mean, do you, does somebody write this culture? Or like, where do you think it comes from? I think it's sort of a decision made by the founders and, and the early employees. Um, and it's how do we get people really excited to come into work every day and never really leave. Um, and people in startups, as you know, they, it's like a 10 a.m. to like one in the morning deal pretty much every day. Um, but I guess, you know, the idea is that everything is provided for you there and you never really have to leave the office. Um, so it's try to create this culture of like fun, open dialogue, free lunch if you can afford it. Um, yeah, so you know, I think it's it, you can just you can just decide in your in your first few months. Maybe put more women on staff. You know, oh, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's let's switch topics and let's talk about uh, women in tech because that's a passion you have, and we'd love to hear about uh, what brought that on and what you're doing with it. 
Yeah, um, so recently I embarked on a three-month project where I just interviewed women in technology to try to find out why there aren't more, um, especially female venture capitalists. I think it's less than 7%, and that's the highest um, estimation. Some say that it's only 1% of women in venture, uh, in venture capital are women. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to figure out why it is. And I think a lot of it is just um, the lack of female programmers and developers, which is something that you know most startups are looking for. Um, a lot of it is just. And is that cultural? Is, like, do you think that's the? Re is it, I mean, is that a culture problem in itself that just people don't learn programming if they're female because they don't think they should? Mm, I think. But yeah, they're certainly I mean, smart enough. Yeah. Definitely. I, I remember one lady that I spoke with who had taught herself to code, and one of her stories um, was she was telling me that she, you know, she always she's so proud of the fact that she's self-taught. And she'll talk to her uh, female friends about it. Many of them are very accomplished. And they'll always say, oh, I don't know how you did that. I never could. But she'll tell her male friends, or even kind of the taxi driver, or the guy that runs the grocery store, and he'll say, I could do that. I just don't have enough time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's this belief that women have that they can't do it for whatever reason. But there's no evidence that, any, that a woman would be any less um, able to, to program. Um, and it probably, you know, goes back to early education as well. I think that was the other sort of conclusion that I came to, is that it just happens, you know, when you're when you're little, when you're a little girl, you're um, picking up Barbie dolls instead of picking up Lego and using right. your hands. Um, so it probably goes back to a very very young age. And do you have a personal story that got you kind of behind this idea? Um, probably having to hear all my female friends tell me about their experiences at work, just like. You know, having strippers in the office and, for, you know, like very inappropriate stuff, <laughs> have been hit on by their boss at office parties. And I'm like, this is just so not okay. Right. Um, and now I understand why women don't want to work in tech. Uh, so, you know, I, I embarked on this long project and, and those were sort of the, some of the conclusions that I came to. Do you use the female restroom at uh, Zappos? Do you see how nice that was? No. Oh. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> Tell me. But, but so, so tell me, how do people like, I mean, you're a reporter, like you're always like probably getting hounded for people to, um, for you to write about them, but how should, how should startups, especially like the kind of people that watch this show approach a reporter? I mean, should they blindly email and what's your whole thought process around that? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, and startups, that's probably the number one thing that I get asked is, um, you know, how do I communicate what I do, um, in a way that makes me stand out, especially in like very crowded markets. And how do I talk to reporters? And I think a lot of that is just trying to be yourself. So probably one of the worst things that you can do is hire PR um, too soon, especially an agency. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you were if you're looking for funding, you wouldn't hire an agency to go and talk to investors on your behalf. So don't do that with press because um, right. it just it looks like you don't really care if you're you know telling someone else to do it for you. And and that person who's your mediator doesn't you know, have the same passion that you have to represent your company. Um, so I would say you know, just reach out to that reporter as a person, show them why you care, tell them your story, um, because it's not just about the product, it's also about you, and just appeal to them on a very human and emotional level. Um, all right, so what's a, what's a good place for people to start um, if they want to get press and they're not going to hire a PR person and they're going to spend time not being a CEO but being a public face, like what do they do? Where do they go? Um, so there's a couple of things that you can do, and a lot of it is just sort of knowing some of the jargon. So knowing what an embargo is, knowing what an exclusive is. Um, if you want to make a reporter really happy, offer them an exclusive. So that means that you're you're telling them that that they're the only ones that can write about some piece of news, um, and it makes the reporter feel pretty special. Like you. Yeah, sure. So when you're going through your email inbox, you see exclusive. See exclusive then you're like, you jump to it a little bit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I'm getting like hun I'm getting hundreds of emails a day, mostly from um, PR. So when I see that personal email from you know an entrepreneur that's read something and resonates with it and wants to offer me an exclusive, that oh, makes that's me feel really special. Um, do so you have any other keywords? I mean, do you look for your name in the subject line? I mean, are you skipping? Are you trying to read everything? Or do you have people that help you, like a virtual no assistant or anything? Or So just, you just uh, yeah. pick and choose, kind of? I skim. 
Okay. Him. Um, but there's it's good to know what's of... going on inside your head, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I wish I could figure out a way to have better filters, but yeah, it's just ridiculous. So okay. I think I think I can always tell when it's a, a person reaching out, a real person and not, mm. you know, a male merge system. And are they, are they usually just these random people that popped in your inbox or is it always like somebody you know, recommending someone else you know? Are you always connecting I think, through I a think trust I'm, network? Actually, or? yeah, that trust network is really great. So if you've got an investor that's very connected, I would, I would um, ask them for an introduction. Okay. And you know that works really well. That's another kind of good, good uh, strategy to get in front of press. All right. Well, I think that's uh, going to be really helpful for a lot of the audience members. So thank you so much for coming out and spending yeah. some time with us. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. All right, Christina Farr, everyone. Now you know how to get in her inbox. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. All right, welcome to the event section. <laughs> Today we're gonna have Adam read you all the events and then he's gonna talk a little bit about his new startup, which I am excited for, so I'm take gonna it away. start with Couple and then go to events here. Okay, fine. And so I, I just, just wanna give myself the plug first. So we're talking we're about Couple. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Couple, Couple is really trying to bring couples together doing different uh, experiential events and doing cool things they might not otherwise get to do. So we have our first event coming up on May 18th. It is five courses of sushi with five wines paired by a sommelier and then at the end the couples had like a little blind wine taste testing competition really cool event it's a $95 per couple and that includes all the sushi all the wine the sommelier everything uh, and that's May 18th and then go to ticketcake.com for tickets and that and then we have a trapeze event. So you can try trapeze with your uh, partner. Oh, that's, and that's it's yeah. really, really a lot of fun. And the people who run that actually are people that work on Cirque and work in these other shows. So you're learning trapeze from the people who are actually doing it professionally. It's a ton of fun, another great couples experience. And that is June 8th. Uh, we're really excited about both those events. Both those events are online at ticketcake.com or they can go to coupla.co and check them out. But we just really want to give couples an awesome experience to meet other couples or come out with their friends friends and do something they normally wouldn't get to do. Okay, yeah, because I love the premise of your company and I think that learning a trapeze sounds like a lot of fun. So Absolutely. I think you're doing a good job putting it together. Well, thank you. So we're really excited about that and uh, we're excited to kick it off. We're excited to work with Ticket Cake. Yeah. Uh, but we're also <laughs> excited about the other events that are happening around Vegas, including Behind the Seams, which is part of the Fashion Speaker Series. And that's uh, with Stitch Factory on Friday, May 17th at the Construction Zone. And it's kind of uh, the Fashion Speaker Series and inspirational talks from different fashion leaders and innovators really cool event they've been doing a lot of great things downtown uh, then we have improv comedy class and that's gonna we be were fun. just talking yeah. about improv comedy class over here we're really looking forward to that and that's gonna be on Monday uh, so or that'll be the downtown uh, project construction zone uh, it's 15 from six students to eight. from 6 yeah. to 8 yeah it's free and you can't beat that. No, you can't be free. You can't be free. Learn how to be funny for free? Yeah, I my mind. You, know you know what? You know what? <laughs> I mean, I got to like, yeah. Well, you know, we got to entertain these people, Five you know? shots with Flavor Flav, and you're just hilarious. <laughs> so uh, if you can't do fly, five shots with Flavor Flav, then check out the improv comedy class. I think that's probably a strong way to go. Like, it's a good second best. Well, you know that vodka just, yeah. Well, it's as you said, it goes straight to the head. Right, uh, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to regret this whole podcast. Uh, okay. and then, um, scale uh, models? Absolutely. Event number three is a scale model building at the Sin Shop uh, Skillshare. So they have a podcast. They have a Skillshare. Sin Shop's doing everything. That's May 25th at 1045 a.m. And if you haven't been to uh, any of the Sin Shop things, they do amazing events. So if you have no skills at all and you don't, then it's a great way he's to... He's right. No, he's uh, right. I'm no, not going to argue just, with him. Listen, I'm calling it what it is. I call uh, it all luck. Yeah. It's all luck. Like the fact you haven't killed yourself is amazing. <laughs> so you can go here, learn how to do great things. Uh, basic, it's going to be like initial class on like basic tools and how to use that type of stuff. Uh, really excited about that. And then finally, uh, we have our Not burlesque. Burlesque. Yeah. Are you going to participate? Yep. I'm in for the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Hall of Fame burlesque. <laughs> <laughs> One more shot, you may be participating. And that's going to be, that's going to be at the, uh, apparently there's audience demand for you to participate. That's on May 29th they uh, might not have my best from 7 to 10 at the mind. Orleans. You know where you can buy tickets for the burlesque show? On Ticket Cake. Ticketcake.com. Yeah. I, that was a shameless plug and you didn't even fall for it. All right. And then uh, event number five is launch up number nine, which I can't believe we're already at launch up number nine. That's yeah, going to be true. the construction zone. Uh, that is on May 29th. 
great event. They always do an awesome job. And we'll it. be talking about the podcast at that. Um, Which is good because you yeah. were supposed to talk about it last time. There were some technical difficulties. Didn't make that happen. So very excited to talk about that downtown we got big plans for the podcast you guys wait like we made 21 episodes which is probably 20 and a half longer than we thought we were gonna well, make we have it, episode so. yeah secret episode zero yeah which nobody none of you were here for that one zero. yes um, <laughs> i think i was dressed up as waldo so, so right at, it was after halloween though it, it, it made sense when you were there uh but that is launch up number nine go to ticketcake.com check that out may 29th so those are the upcoming events that are going on downtown and around town and uh in vegas and checking it out. cheers for the the end of episode 21 hey cheers to you driving me home <laughs> Jack, driving us home. thank you guys for coming out i appreciate it all right, that's it. Dylan's <laughs> <laughs> ready for bed. Okay, yeah. Beat bombs, beat bombs, beat bombs. Downtown project. Vegas, we the hardest. Yeah, yeah. Our ride, our ride is downtown. We running this. Less than y'all just running less. Creeping on and come up to Vegas. Yeah, we in this bitch. Tweet to your followers. Remember, like a flashback. Vegas tech. Don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.